Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Affinity Designer and gradients. How to use gradients, how to add them, how to remove them, all those sort of things. Also how to use them with shapes. I'm using them with a pixel layer and this is the key thing. So let's go right back to the start. Now there's some odd quirky things about this gradient thing which I must admit compared with Photoshop, sometimes I use it in Photoshop gradients. I like that probably more so than, than this because this is just one gradient per layer and it has a few other additional quirks that occasionally I think, I hope at some point with Affinity Designer 2 that they update it and make it slightly different. Who knows, maybe they will, maybe they won't. Maybe you, you might like it, you might prefer it this way. However, just remove it. Let's go back completely to start. So no layers, nothing, no shapes and you can use gradients with shapes as well. I'm gonna go through that as well. So let's, because if I try over here to the gradient tool, you can see the gradient tool over here. I can try, nope, nothing appears because there isn't a layer. Needs a layer to work on. So layer, and it's not this one, new layer. You've got to go to new pixel layer, just to confuse it slightly more. New pixel layer, as different from new layer. So what you can do, you can now add your gradient and it defaults this very, very sort of dull, unfortunately never remembers the last gradient you've used which is a pity, but you've got white and gray. Very unusual choice. And you can move that backwards and forwards. So you can have it across there. Let's just buy, put it across like that. And you've got one layer over here. And the key panels here, view, studio, layers, and swatches. I always like swatches. Swatches are useful because you can add your gradients to the swatches. So if I just display it, there's the swatches. And it's a very, very small selection. You don't get many. Actually, some of these I've created. You, you can create your own as well. You can quickly add your own gradients. And even that is slightly fiddly, I must admit, how it's done. So you can, now, what I'm gonna do, you can also change it. So you can go for it elliptical. So you can move that. Now, of course, as always, it's gonna be absolutely huge. And I'm just gonna go to navigator so I can actually reach this, the edge there. Oh, that's what I want. And you can see now, because I haven't got it locked, you can lock it over here. So you can lock that and then it will be locked to that. Obviously you can have it as a radial or circle, or you can have it like an elliptical design. It's quite useful to have it locked if that's what you want. And you can move that around. And of course, what you can then do, you can change this gradient. So you can go up here, click on there, and you can click on there, and you can go there, and you can change the color. So it goes to red and maybe obviously you might want to go for there. You can also change opacity. So you've got opacity here. Opacity means you can see through this thing. So you can just go there. Let's put it down a bit. Let's just go down. So you've now got, now if there was something in the background, you'd be able to see it because you can actually look through. You've got this transparency going through, which is quite useful if you want to combine layers. You can combine layers as well, of course, using blending modes, but it's just a quite useful thing with opacity, I think. But you can put it back to that. And also you can change the color there by clicking there, go for maybe blue. Now, if you go over here and you've got layers, and where is layers there? It's, a, it's just a standard layer. It's a pixel layer, and you can do various things. Unfortunately, there's not that many effects. In fact, very few in Affinity Designer. So there's not much you can particularly do. You can go into the, go over here to Affinity Designer, and there's Pixel Persona. So you can always go into there, and you can modify it in, in a, a number of ways. But you can also duplicate this one. So you can go to Layers, you can go there, duplicate. However, you would think that you can still can continue with this color scheme you just created. Doesn't work like that. Well, probably will this time, but most time when I do it, it doesn't. So go into gradient tool and apply it, and you'll notice it's gone back. And you start, and it starts back at the old one, which I find very baffling and quite frustrating actually. I think it should keep the gradient you've got, it would make more sense. However, it doesn't. So you have to work with what you've got and it's going to be, so you can then, of course, you can go with conical. Very rarely use that one. I must admit, you can move that around. You can reposition that and you can move these around as well. You can create a vast number of different designs as well. I mean, it's quite nice, but it must admit, probably the, the last one I use. There's also a bitmap, but I'm not going to go into that in this one. This is, that's for patterns. So you can open a file. And you, what you can do, you can then use the same controls as the gradient. Basically, you can just zoom in, zoom out, and all that sort of stuff. They've added into the, the same command. Very odd, 
in many ways, I personally, I wish there was a pattern fill control would be a much nicer way of doing it, but that's what they've done. Got it in the gradient. So let's just go back to the, just radial. Let's just go radial. I'm going to do all of it, but assume that most of the functionality is very similar to linear or radial, conical, etc. See, there's some variations, but so you can, what you can do, you can move that around. And of course, what you can do, you can go to the swatches. So, you know what? I don't like that one particularly. I actually never like that one. Quite often with defaults, I very rarely like defaults. So click there and you can run through your different designs. So I've got a nice design there with lots and lots of different stops. And you can change them again, like before. You can go over here and you can move that, change that. You can change the midpoints. You can change that. And of course, you can go to the gradient tool. Now, you can also move it around. That, move that over there. Now, luckily this time, it doesn't suddenly go back to the gray one. Sometimes I, I always, whenever I start doing it with this gradient tool, there's always part of me that thinks, you know what? It's gonna go back to that gray, the gray and white. No, I don't want that linear gray and white. However, there's the design there. And you can move it around, you can change your origin points, position it, reposition it, change the lengths, and you can unlock that so you can make it different, squeeze that like that. You can make it very thin, little burst line like that, if you want to do that. Or just go back to the radial, which maybe is a bit too small there. Right, so you've got that. So you've got multiple layers. Now, useful, you've got layers, means you've got blending modes. So blending modes, what you can do, you can always go there to darken. This is what I mean, it's not so flexible as applying multiple gradients on same layer because it's I find it quite nice to be able to apply when you do brushes you wouldn't just apply one brush on a layer so really why apply just one gradient but that's the way it works so and you can move it around and you can see it changes the the design you can just shift that there and you of course don't have to go dark and you go with difference and you can move that around and you can see it changes and you can change that so you can create a vast range of different colors Color designs there. But let's just go back to normal and move that around. Now, once you've done this, I'm just going to go to the next thing. And there's probably something I think once I've removed it, I'll probably think of something else. But let's just go back to completely fresh design there. Now, what you can also do, you can use gradients with shapes. Not like let's go for something a bit different from a rectangle. Let's just go for good old, my favorite, the cog tool. So there's the cog. So you just drag that out. Cog tool's great because it's got a lot of functionality here. You can change, modify various settings with the cog tool selected. You've got all these different controls here, so you can make it go out like that and modify these. And there's a lot of settings along the top. You quite often you get both. So you get the interactive, you get the, the settings along the top as well, which is quite useful. And of course, you can change the fill color, etc. But what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to go with a gradient. So go there, the gradient tool, and then you can obviously set it, say elliptical, and you can see straight away without obviously even adding it, you've got it set there. And you can do radial, and of course you can run through bitmap if you want. But I'm just going to go with elliptical. And you can reposition things, so you can just move that around. And it's still live. So you've got over here layers. So what you can do if you want, because one thing with I really like with this, Layers, you can actually add things into it. So I'm just going to copy. So you can go to edit and copy. So you copy, and then you can go to edit and paste inside. So you can paste inside, and then you can see you've got this design, which you can, so you can create a very interesting. So, and also you can hold down the alter option key, and that's on the keyboard next to command or control. Hold that down, and you can duplicate that design. But what you can also do, of course, you've got, you've got this gradient, which you can still modify. So you can still go and change it. You can also go over here and click on there and add a different gradient. But what you can also do, you can go up here again, normal. You can go through the blending mode. So you've got a difference. Just going to go to the move tool. Don't want to use the gradient because the gradient tool, unfortunately, can't move anything. All it does is move the gradient feature. So you can just move that around within there. And again, you can hold down the alter option key and duplicate, and you can see what happens you can end up with a real super colorful design like that, which maybe is a bit extreme as a color background for your cog tool. 
but it's still all editable. So you can still go to the cog tool there and engrave and you can still modify the design and you can see the, the gradient moving there. So you can select all of that. Don't want that. Now, what you can also do, of course, you can use rectangles. You can use rectangles. Rectangles is an obvious one. So you've got rectangles there. And again, you can select different gradients there. If you've got some gradients there, down there as well. Now, you'll notice as you do that, and this is a key thing, you can see there, when you're using this tool, you've got this option here. So if you've deselected everything, so everything's deselected, you've got your gradient there. What you can do, you can add it. Now, sometimes if you select this, and suddenly you'll say that using the move tool or some other tool, you'll suddenly find that the color there might not be what you expect. It might be like green or blue or some other color. It's not the gradient. But if you've got a gradient there, what you can do, you can go over to this swatches and there's a little option here, just a little thing. It doesn't look particularly that it's gonna do anything. Personally, I think that should be a plus. There is a plus in it, but it's very tiny and it doesn't look like it does anything, but actually it adds it to the current thing. So it's been just added. Obviously I already had it, so it doesn't think. But what you can do, say go up here and you can gradient tool again, you can modify it. So you can go for blue, maybe turn it into green. So you've got green there, maybe go for another one. And let's go for black and so on, so on. Now, while you've got that, and that's the key thing, always, that's the only thing that matters. If you've got that, what you can do, you can then go over here and again, just this bit here, click, and it's added to the thing. And it's just useful because then you've got some more. So if it just comes up with standard gray sort of design, you can always go through this and click through these things. But what you can also do, you can add adjustments to this as well. So maybe you don't, you've got this color scheme. And now, unfortunately, there's some applications that are really good. I remember one that was really good, uh, KPT. There was the gradient tools there. You, you could actually manipulate and you could actually make it scroll backwards and forwards. You could change every single setting just by scrolling through. And it was, I thought it was quite effective. No tool seemed to do that now. It's a pity, really, because I think you've got this gradient. It'd be nice if you could manipulate the gradient. Just go over here and just sort of scroll through and change all the colours together so everything sort of moves along so you could change it. However, that it's not available. Sorry, but I just want to point out. But the workaround for that is that, of course, what you can do, you can add a layer and you've got a new adjustment layer. So you could go over here. So new adjustment layer and the layer and you can go down, maybe use, now I'm not going to go for a colour one, I'm going to go for black and white. I like black and white. So black and white, straight away you can see what happens. It makes the gradient design, now it's not really, because if you saved it over here, it would be still a coloured one. But you've got the black and white over here. So it's a great way of manipulating the gradient without obviously changing the underlying gradient. And you can just go through that and try out lots of different things. Now you don't have to use that one, of course. You've got it here, just select that. You can change the, you've got a mask here, so you can change it. So you don't have to use that, you can use the gradient. Go over there and you can actually see, if you go in the gradient, and the gradient then, because you've got that selected, you can see the gradient is being used there. So you can see more or less of the gradient coming through. So the rest of it is all black, but there's a bit of color there, which is quite nice. Now you don't have to use that, of course, that black and white one. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna actually add a different one. So show you can do change of color, go to layer, new adjustment layer, and let's just go for HSL, good as anything, HSL. So you can see, then you can just run through the colors. Now it's not the most colorful of gradients, but you can see straight away, you've got the colors changing there. So you can alter them if you want to at some point. And also, of course, you've got blending modes, so you can run through blending modes. So you go through difference. That's at the bottom, down here at the bottom. And you can also modify that even more. There's a whole loads of different settings that you can change, tweak, and modify there. So let's just close that. Now, what you can also do, and let's, I'm just gonna remove all of that. The final thing you can also do with type. So, You've got some letters there, so I'm just going to create a very basic type, artistic type, and it's just going to be the word text. Very original. And straight away you can see you've got your 
gradient in there. I think it's much nicer just having a nice gradient there, but you can manipulate it. Of course, you can go over here, change that, move that around, and you can always put it back to a solid color if you don't want that, or maybe go back to linear, move that around, and so on and so on. So you create some very interesting, super colorful designs for text as well. And that's that. Well, I think that's run through as much as I can think of. Whenever I do these videos, quite often I do a video and then five seconds after I finish the video, I think, yes, that's another thing I should have talked about and it's completely escaped me. But anyway, I think that's a run through of the shapes, the layers, as well as type or text. Obviously, Infinity Designer. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time about Photoshop, Infinity Designer, Infinity Photo, Infinity Publisher. Painter, illustrator, and quite a few other ones as well. Also, if you've got any comments, please put some. If I haven't explained anything particularly well, please let me know in the comments. And also, because I quite often can answer questions, obviously, in the comments as well. So maybe there's just something that's very simple that I've completely neglected to say. Also, a dislike or like, always appreciated. Thank you much.